beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And this is something I can't see. I see the problems when I get up in the morning. I do my best to, to look well. Were you always the prettiest girl in your class? No, I was very shy and a little awkward. You were? Yeah, I had really big ears that are covered right now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's on purpose. Do you feel sexy? No, not when I'm being me. But I've played characters where I feel sexy. Things to say about your appearance and stuff at a young age, it's like really hard to know what's worth hearing or not. But you know, when you're 17, you don't really know you don't know that yet? Oh my gosh, every morning my body works for me. My two legs, they can walk me to work. And I'm worried about the pimple on my face. Mm -hmm. You know, my brain works every day just to give thoughts. My heart works every day to give love. I can use my hands and my feet. How lucky are we just with that? Hi everyone, how are we doing today? I hope you're all good and having a wonderful day. If you're new, welcome. My name is Michelle and this is The Shape Week, where we discuss fashion and beauty on a deeper level through use of art, diary, and social sciences. So you may bring them together in order to develop your true personal style that really embraces you as a unique individual, inside and out. And do fashion past your traditional style for styles taken at, because there's so much more than meets the eye. If this sounds good to you, please subscribe, or if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me here again today for a video all about letting go of beauty standards and beginning to create the life you wish to live. In this video, I'm actually going to be addressing questions sent to me in a viewer message. And I must do a disclaimer at first, if you are struggling with anything such as depression, anxiety, body image, and so on, please confide in someone you trust as well as a professional. If you are just struggling a bit with your image, your style, and being confident, this video is for you. So the questions we're going to be answering today are How can I stop trying to look like the beauty standard and missing out on life because I feel insecure? How do I actually feel beautiful? It truly breaks my heart so much when I see or hear about people making themselves small, not attending an event because I don't feel good enough to go, like going to a pool party or buying aspirational sizing of clothes because they believe they need to be this size. It's so disheartening when people shy away from taking a photo because they feel not attractive enough to be in it. This is such a universal experience that is frighteningly becoming more common and I feel that most people don't like to talk about it it's something we like to hold inside because we don't want to trouble anyone with these issues but I hope for the next 20 minutes or so that I can be that person for you and hopefully you can take away some resources and tools to handle this and get past it together so you can be the most beautiful person and not just see yourself this way I was actually speaking to my friend and she's stunning, like drop dead stunning, like the sort of girl that just walks in and lights up the room. She's very outgoing, very friendly, very kind person. And of course, physically she's gorgeous as well. She has a beautiful figure, beautiful hair, beautiful face, just beautiful everything. And I remember I always admired her so much growing up. And she opens up to me because we were talking about this topic and she says to me, oh, Growing up, I always wished to be more like you, to be calm, graceful, and thin. And I looked at her in just complete confusion. I was like, no, this does not make any sense. And I told her how I wished to be more like her, more bold, genial, full figured. And we looked at each other and just laughed because it was so ridiculous. And she was saying to me how she had always tried to make herself small because she felt she was too much. And I said I would make myself small because I never felt I was enough. And it really goes to show the grass is greener. I believe it's so common actually in psychology. I don't know why I'm saying I believe. It's literally facts how we are attracted to certain things biologically, environmentally, socially, culturally, and how that shapes our self-perception. You could be admiring someone so deeply and be completely blind to that same admiration looking back at you. 
And so many people apologize just for their existence. They apologize for looking the way they do, for sounding the way they do, for wanting the things they want, whether that be a career or relationship or so on. So many people that I've had the pleasure of speaking to who have instilled their trust in me have talked about these moments in their life where they were trying to be a certain way, maybe in terms of looks or behavior because they didn't feel that they could reach what is so expected from people in this day and age and when you do this when you're busy modifying yourself you're kind of at a standstill you don't live fully and it reminds me so much of one of my favorite quotes by oscar wilde that goes to live is the rarest thing in the world most people just exist which also reminds me of another one of my favorites a film called sabrina and it really explores this sort of experience so let's break it down because even though film is not real life we see so much of ourselves in art and this is one that really goes in on this specific topic. The story of a girl named Sabrina Fairchild, played by Audrey Hepburn, who is always looking in. She's on the outside, living very passively, never noticed, never wanting to be a bother, making herself small, and doing what she's told, what she's supposed to do. Feeling miserable, so much so that she wants to end her life. Following this attempt, she goes to Paris and she's like this woman child, not very on top of things, taking this cooking class and letting the food burn because she's just so far off in her head pining of the woman she wishes to be, the woman she wishes to become, the relationship she wants to have, the clothes she wants to wear, the way she wants to appear in the world. She decides to transform into a glamorous woman and it follows her journey in this transformation of becoming who she always knew she could be. It is the film with the famous La Vie en Rose letter from Paris scene where she talks about getting her diploma, learning how to be in and of the world, how it would be so difficult to recognize her. She returns with a completely different aura, a new outlook on life, and carries herself with a newfound confidence. When we are changing ourselves physically, it's very psychological as it is physical. But a much more important recipe I have learned how to live, how to be in the world and of the world, and not just to stand aside and watch. And I will never, never again run away from life. If you should have any difficulty recognizing your daughter, I shall be the most sophisticated woman at the Glen Cove station reveals the infinite possibilities that lie within us as individuals, illuminating a path towards self-discovery and reinvention. Consultants and stylists help explore this intricate connection between one's aspirations and the stunning results they achieve, allowing them to be more comfortable in their own skin. Accepting development visually is not only aesthetically satisfying, but also revealing of an inner transformation. I watched this film at a time where I was actually really struggling with this. I was a teenager, I was so embarrassed of my face, of my voice, of my body, just everything. And when I would look at Audrey, I admired her so much and I would think about what do I specifically admire about her? And it wasn't the pitch of her voice, it was the answers to the question she would give. It wasn't how her body looked, but rather how some pieces were styled together, her style itself. And when I began to take her off this pedestal and viewed her more as a person, this formable person, it almost dismantled that standard. This is how someone may be in and of the world. When you allow yourself to step out from those standards, allow yourself to step out from what other people are saying to you and actually define this for yourself. You don't need to be whisked away to Paris and taking these cooking classes and learning languages to do all of this. You can do this from the comfort of your own home, of your own room. And look within yourself, start to really look at your life now and where you wish to go. And what does that look like? Because I'm not going to lie, looks are important. I have a whole career because of it and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that they don't, but there's so much more to it than that. And I talk about this in my femme fatale analysis where looks matter, looks are important, they can get you through the door, but it takes more to take over the whole building. Which leads me to my next point, recognize your patterns. Do you tend to compare yourself to others who fit what you think the ideal beauty standard is? If so, who? 
can you try to view them more as a person rather than how they relate to the standard? For example, their different traits or skills. Maybe you can see them for their talent or their character instead of this personification of the standard. Because when you think of yourself, you know you are more than your looks. Acknowledging this in someone else, you too can take them off that pedestal and view them more for who they are. It will allow you to be viewed as who you are instead of being beneath someone else just because they may fit into a standard at any given point of time more. Do you have off days where you compare yourself more? If so, what is happening on these days and not on the others? Really recognize the pattern and adapt accordingly to break these habits and rekindle a proper self-image. Replace them with ones that combat it. When you do this, you will discover your actual insecurities that you can work on fixing and nurturing, then unlearning them like the ones that you've been taught to have. Achieve this standard, the standard is just going to change, and also you will become this empty shell of a human being. You won't be substance with all of that style, it will just be like a piece of art locked away. It will be something that is beautiful but people will not really know. I talked about it a lot in my previous video where I explored the dangers of aestheticizing self-care and I feel so many people create this dream life in their mind and they go, oh when I look like that then I can live this way without taking the steps to actually create that life and instead they're trying to create the body that they think will live that life, get the skin, the hair, the makeup, the clothes that will live this way and of course looks are a part of this. From my video Why Mean Girls Wear Pink, there were studies about how women who are more attractive can be viewed as more competent and preferable for a job to some extent, but if a woman is deemed quote unquote too attractive, it can become harmful to her professional life. It's very much like be attractive but not too attractive. Often though this is misconstrued the opposite way, going I don't look good enough, why do I deserve the chance? I'm not good enough, why should I have the chance? It is a basic human motivation, the pursuit of beauty. It's essential if one is to experience fulfillment in the world. But if beauty is in the mind of the beholder, why do most of us experience this anxiety around it? The belief that we must change our appearance to conform to societal expectations of being attractive. 90% of women globally between the ages of 15 and 64, as reported in a recent poll of 3,300 girls and women from 10 different countries, have shown that they will take a back seat in their own life because they don't feel that they look right aesthetically due to the beauty standards or simply feel too inadequate for everyday life because of their insecurities from tasks as fruitful as socializing, speaking up, going to school, work, making friends, dating, or actually medical care. Common points that comes up on this topic is how if someone is beautiful, they could have a bad personality and that makes them unattractive, but they at least get a chance. Why are you not giving yourself the chance when you know you are good inside and your body is here for you, your body breathes for you, your body has a heart, your body has a mind that is so capable. You don't need to hold yourself back I grew up immersed in two cultures, I'm a dual citizen if you did not know, and in one culture it was standard to be thin, to be blonde, to have a larger bust, the other was to have wider hips, to have tan skin, to have thick dark hair, and this was at the same exact point in time, just the location was different, it was the early 2000s, and obviously I fit one of those more than the other, I have traits of both just because of genetics. And people naturally look like this. There's so many people who naturally fit the beauty standard of a specific era, of a specific location. But if you do not, this does not mean that you have to transform yourself into the standard and then you can go and then you can live in that time, in that location and do what you wish to. Life is not about this. I've had the privilege of going to quite some nice places and when I walk in, it's not full of Instagram, runway, supermodels. It's just people with their friends, with their family, enjoying themselves. 
if you really go outside and take a look around you, you will see the beauty and just the people walking down the street, the people who are studying, the people who are working. Everyone has this very distinct beauty to themselves and it's especially enhanced when you can recognize that within yourself outside of a societal standard. It's definitely easier said than done, but the same way that we learn certain things may be a flaw and become insecure about it, or the same way we can dismantle that belief. At one point in time, Pluto was considered a planet, and then it was not considered a planet, then it's considered a dwarf planet. Information can be very fluid. The same way that we intake information, especially now, can be very fluid. That is one of the greatest beauties about learning, is that it's just this ever-evolving state. It's one of the reasons why I love learning and studying and reading and watching documentaries, because there is so much out there, and there's such a strength and recognizing that you don't know everything and you cannot be everything and recognizing the beauty of others but also yourself. Beauty is defined as a combination of qualities such as shape, color, or form that pleases aesthetic senses, especially sight. The quest for beauty has fascinated cultures for years and years on end. Between filmmakers, poets, singers, sculptors, and fashion designers alike, just to name a few examples of the numerous types of artists that have attempted to create and immortalize beauty to establish beauty. We appreciate the aesthetic value of someone beautiful, a well-dressed person, with nice hair, a radiant smile, graceful movement, this authentic sense of self, whether it's manufactured or not. It would seem that everyone is on a quest to discover the secret to it, the secret to being beautiful. But for some, this journey isn't a pleasurable one. There are certain things we learn to be insecure about that aren't really huge insecurities at all. For some people, that might be their stretch marks, it might be their nose, it might be their eye bags, it might be their weight, it might be their body type, it might be their hair, and so on. But in reality, those differences are what make life so beautiful. It's something to be said where there's this very human part of us, and I think sometimes we disconnect from it, especially in this day and age where we see all the Photoshop, we see all the editing, we see all of this online and in our media. I grew up where only magazines had Photoshop and people would say, oh, those photos are Photoshop, don't pay attention to it, it's not reality. But I grew up to study and do graphic design and to actually have to retouch photos for work. And the extent of Photoshop has come so far and wide an industry-grade tool is now in everyone's hand. It's advancing even further with all this AI, and as the technology moves forward, we cannot be leaving our humanity behind. There's something to be said about how we work with these tools, how we handle them, what we do with them, and you can actually change the way that you see yourself through the way that you recognize these tools. Psychologically, our subconscious takes in everything as true. We trust in our eyes. Even if a photo is edited, even if it's a news article about a new beauty topic, even if it's a product on a shelf, we see it and it's real. So make sure that you're intaking information, whether that be through books, on your phone, on the computer, on the TV, that really aligns with the belief systems you wish to have and not distort your self-perception further. We live in a time where access is so common and this is a wonderful thing. Just make sure to be using that access in a positive way. Find brands, style icons, and people who match your aesthetic and personality. Especially on social media, if you check it every day, I'm not going to tell you to not use your phone, but it will give you a really good example of different clothes that can look gorgeous and fit right on you in different ways, both in terms of personality and physical. You can also learn to admire those traits or qualities you share, rather than apologizing for what you don't share with others. It's not always about doing what is considered quote-unquote right for your specific physical state. Even in my consultations and lectures, I teach styling techniques and there's this know the rules to break the rules aspect to it. Have you ever noticed how beauty icons, they always have their own sort of look rooted in their personality? Even though they don't necessarily fit the standard of their day and age, they are still very admired. 
You need to find your signature and you can do the same for yourself. Think about what would be a healthy routine for you, which makeup enhances your features. What clothes make your signature self work on your physical form? When you envision your dream woman or man, how do they appear in the world? How do they style themselves? How do they carry themselves? It is just that in the forever changing landscape of beauty and societal standard, it's more often than not we find ourselves dissatisfied even once reaching what we thought would make us look or feel beautiful. Because beauty is not everything and style means nothing without substance. You don't want to be this empty shell of a person. Obviously this is a fashion channel, so the next step would be to create your signature style. And don't root it out of looking good. Instead, think about your personality, think about your identity, think about your goals in life. Maybe it is your career, maybe it is your school, maybe it is your relationship, maybe it is your family, or so on. And think about what is it that you love? What is it in life that brings you joy? What makes you feel most comfortable in your skin? There are some people who love to dress up and wear designer clothes. There's some people who love to wear thrifty clothes or some people love to wear vintage clothes. There's so many different ways to go about shopping and to find what really is going to work with you within your budget. It's going to be something that isn't made in that image of the standard that you're always striving for and chasing for because so many times people will do what they believe is right and in the end only hurt themselves. When you begin to actually study yourself acknowledge yourself, really accommodate yourself, you will find things come a lot easier. To share a subject I handle a lot during consultation, which is beauty anxiety, also imagined ugliness, which is typically formed as a result of bullying in childhood or societal standards into adulthood in various degrees. I had clients confide in me about learning a feature is ugly and then they walk around going, oh my goodness, I can't believe I went out like this, I can't believe I look like this, how could I have not seen it before? This is that anxiety. But even from that story, you can see that that thought came from this other person. If you can pinpoint the root of that insecurity, maybe it was something a family member said, maybe it was a classmate, maybe it was a co-worker, maybe it was from seeing an advertisement, a movie or a TV show, wherever it came from, if you can find the root cause, you can more easily unlearn it because it is so much easier said than done to unlearn an in insecurity. But it is possible and through doing this you will drastically change the way that you see yourself. And as beauty standards constantly shift, true beauty resides within each of us and I know that's terribly cliche to say but I'm sorry, it's true, it's classic for a reason. Even in my supermodels video, I have a clip of Cindy Crawford talking about how these photos, these editorials they create are created by the village. It's a bunch of people contributing to this piece of art and even the supermodels don't necessarily look exactly like their photos. There's something to be said about this because that beauty does not come from the supermodel herself. Of course, obviously they are gorgeous, but it's about their creativity, their personalities, what they can bring out for that photograph. Or so much more than any label worn or applied. I love this concept. It's something I explore in all my different style analysis to show people are so much more than their looks. They're so much more than any label that is cast upon them. People are so dimensional and multifaceted. If you are changing, it should be out of growth and out of love going. I love myself enough that I want to eat healthy foods. I love myself enough that I'm going to take better care of my hair. I love myself enough that I will look after myself the way I would a friend. If you're having too much of a hard time treating yourself well, almost removing yourself from this, which sounds so odd, will help. A lot of people find it a lot easier to be kinder to other people than themselves. What you should do is actually position yourself almost outside of yourself and treat yourself like your best friend. And if you don't love yourself now, that is okay. I know that is a very hard thing to do, but what you're going to do is love your future self, love your past self. Love yourself in the way that you would your best friend. I know for me, I speak to myself so cruelly because I don't wanna ever hurt or bother or burden anyone. And sometimes like, if my voice doesn't sound very nice, I will be harsh to myself. But then I think about, I would never say this to my best friend. And if you look to yourself in the future as your best friend going, I'm going to do this for her, I'm going to do this for him. You will find yourself a little more motivated. You will find yourself not 
picking away at your flaws, but rather setting your flaws aside and maybe you'll find those flaws develop into a strength. Maybe they fade away into the background. Maybe that insecurity lessens and you feel more confident as you're taking action. That's a great way to build confidence. If you say something you want to do and you actually do it, rather than going, oh, let me do all this in advance and then maybe I'll be good enough to do it. By actually doing it, you become good enough because you're capable. You know, I am someone who is so passionate about development, self-development, but you cannot hate yourself into the person you love. You cannot work out to get the dream body. You cannot scrub at your skin full of hate and expect your skin to be glowing, feeling a sort of way broken or lost or defeated. You don't have to carry this baggage with you. You have the choice to transform it, transform it into a toolbox, transform it into something that really empowers you. You can do this just for yourself or to help others. Whatever you are most comfortable with, people feel more fulfilled in different ways. So no matter how much I say, you should celebrate your bodies for its ability and not focus on how it looks. That can be very difficult for some people, but I know a lot of people who have been in quite drastic situations like this is not the most drastic i just don't feel comfortable speaking on other people's experiences but i know for me i've had struggle with illness i've struggled with injury and during those times i wasn't going like oh, i wish i had abs i was just wishing i could stand up and walk normally i was wishing that i was physically well to do things that were so normal things that we normally take for granted how precious and how fragile life can be and i know so many people overlook the little moments but those little moments really do make up your life and instead of viewing it as just a means to an end and then skipping out on those big moments because you do not feel enough you should really take in everything if you do not feel like you can say i'm gorgeous or handsome instead you can say i'm an individual i'm worthy of respect i deserve to live a nice life you could say if this is too hard that i am the one who smiles at my neighbors when i am getting the mail i am the one who feeds my pet i'm the one who holds doors open for my peers anything little like this that you see the value in yourself you see the value you add to other people's lives the absence of saying my body is really beautiful you can say things like my body allows me to play tennis which is my favorite thing to do with my best friend you can say my body allows me to eat nice food and i really enjoy cooking these sorts of approaches will change the way that you typically think of your body so it won't be more of a sum of parts but rather just yourself living, breathing, and being. If you ever do find yourself unable to treat yourself well, just remember everyone is worthy of decency, of respect, including yourself. I know sometimes it can be difficult where we see other people we believe are far more deserving or far more capable. Maybe they are stronger, maybe they are smarter, maybe they are prettier, but there's something to say about having your own value and recognizing your own value. It is like if someone has a hundred dollars and you have fifty dollars you still have that fifty dollars just because that person has a hundred doesn't mean you're incapable of getting to a hundred it's not this you're not in competition with anyone else not even a concept not even a standard you don't have to answer to something non-existent something cast upon you there is no need for this because if you really look back at all those times where you were striving think about it what could have you been doing instead that would better your life now? What are you doing now that you could swap out for that action you believe would make your life better? Also, with all of this said, you do not need to learn to love your insecurities. It is completely okay to have an insecurity. It's healthy, it's human nature. And there's so many resources out there to cater to those insecurities. If you have acne, you do not need to go, oh, I love my acne. You can go and get maybe a cleanser or work with a dermatologist if you need something more advanced. You cannot apply makeup and like how it comes out after if you hate the way your face look. You cannot go and get cosmetic procedure and be happy afterwards when you are not comfortable with the integrity of your body. You cannot go and dye your hair and be happy with the color if the texture isn't well kept. Maybe you feel very out of shape and weak and you go work out to feel stronger and not just be able to have muscles that look aesthetically pleasing but also can make you do what you wish to do in life. It should be done for yourself, not for anyone else, not because so-and-so said that 
your nose isn't good and not because someone else said that you weigh not enough or too much. None of these things matter. It matters that you are happy, healthy, and able to take care of yourself. I hope that these tools will allow you to step more into yourselves, that you all can see the beauty in yourselves, and this video helps you a little bit on your way. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.